Hello, my name is Paul Miners, and welcome to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to show you some of the sort of hidden, lesser known features of Asana, that uh, these are things that often when I'm working with a client, helping them with Asana, I'll show them and they'll go, oh wow, I had no idea that even existed. So that's the purpose of this video. If you are new to Asana, I would suggest actually going and looking at some of the other Asana training videos on my YouTube channel first. Uh, this video is gonna be better if you've already used Asana a little bit. At the end of the video, if you do have any questions, please leave me a comment below. And if you would like to get some one-on-one -on -one help with Asana, setting it up, learning how to get more out of the tool or training your team, then check out the link in the description below to learn more about our consulting options. Now, the first feature I want to show you, which I find is quite unique to Asana, is that you can multi-home a task from one project into another project. And there's a couple of really useful, uh, well, good use cases for doing this. So here I am, I'm inside this project. This is an example client called Amazon. And let's just say I have a task like this, I'm gonna create a brand new task, design new logo. So I'm putting it in this project because it is part of this Amazon client that we're working with. Now what I can do here in the task panel is if I hover my mouse next to the project here, I can click this plus button and I can multi-home this task into another project. And so if you watch what happens, when I put this into design requests, a couple of things are gonna happen. Firstly, the task now lives in two projects. It's not a duplicate, it's actually the same task. I can now access it from multiple projects. But the cool thing that happened there is that the custom fields, like the status, the request type, the estimated hours, those fields that I've set up in that design requests project have now appeared on this task. And because I have some rules, if I go to the design requests, because I've customized this project with uh, some rules, the new logo task, which you can now see here, uh, has automatically been updated with a new subtask. And so by putting this task into multiple projects, uh, it inherits the properties or the rules and customization that I've done in that project now apply to this task. It's also a useful way if you have tasks that are sort of cross-functional that apply to multiple projects or multiple areas of your business, you can multi-home them so that different teams can access that task in different projects that they're working in. Another feature that is easy to miss, especially if you're using the Asana desktop app or if you use Asana in a, the Safari browser, is that you can record videos in Asana using Vimeo. Now this is currently only supported if you're using Asana in the Chrome browser. Uh, and I actually have an entire video on how this feature works. I'll link it up here if you want to go and have a look. But if you click into the description of a task, you'll see this record a video icon here. And also down in the comments, I can record a video. And so once I click this, the recording interface loads and you can see I have some options here. I can record just my screen or just my camera, or I can do both uh, my screen and my camera. I can choose which camera and microphone I want to use, and then I can click record. And so this is a really useful way of putting video messages or um, adding feedback to a task in Asana, especially if you need to share your screen, maybe you're giving feedback on a design or a web page or something like that that's very visual. You can, you can provide that feedback and you can provide a lot more detail via video than you can compared to just typing a text-based response. So I use this quite a lot. I love sending people videos because I just find you can communicate a lot more detail. The next feature I want to highlight is that if you are on the business subscription, you can provide feedback on images that you've attached to a task. For example, here I have this uh, poorminers.com logo that we're working on. And if I click on this attachment, it's gonna open the image uh, in, in, this, in this tab. And up here, you see I can add feedback. So I can then um, click anywhere on my image and I can say, uh, change the font color to blue. And I can put in a description here, let's just do that. I can assign this to somebody, maybe I'm gonna assign this to um, uh, you know, a designer on my team. I'm gonna put maybe a due date on here, this needs to be done by tomorrow. So basically I'm providing feedback, but I'm doing it in an actual task that's gonna be assigned to this person. So let's go ahead and create that task. I could, I could add other annotations here. Maybe I say, you know, um, let's get rid of the mug. I'll just create that one as well. 
And so I've now provided that feedback. And so now if I go back to my task, you can see the feedback that I've provided has been added to the list of subtasks. So you can actually see uh, the annotations here. Um, I can see, yeah, change the font color. It's been assigned to Jarvis due tomorrow. My notes are all on here as well. And it's even include the, included the attachment in the task so this person knows which image it's related to. So really useful, very hidden little feature that's great, especially for those kind of design-based tasks that you're doing if you're needing to give feedback on designs, web pages, things like that. Another hidden feature of the Asana smartphone app, and I'm using the iPhone here, is if you create a new task and I tap this little ABC icon, I can use my phone camera to take a picture of this is a list of reading recommendations in the back of Ryan Holiday's Ego is the Enemy. And so I can add this photo to my task. And what Asana is doing is it's now performing optical character recognition and it's pulling out that text and you can see there all that text um, is input to the description of my task. So I'm going to finish my task here, reading list, and I can create that now. So really quick and easy way that you can take text that you uh, from a notebook, from a page, anywhere really, and you can add it to a task description. The next feature I want to highlight is related to forwarding emails into Asana. So you might already be aware that you can add tasks to Asana via email. And so if I simply forward an email to this address, x at mail.asana.com, the subject of that email will become the task name, the body will form the description of the task, and any attachments will be included as well. So it's a great way of getting items from my inbox into Asana where I can add them to my to-do list. And Asana knows to assign them to me because I'm forwarding from the email address that is associated with my Asana account. But the feature that people often miss is that in your settings under the email forwarding tab, you can actually whitelist multiple email addresses. So you can see I've done that here already. I have a personal and a work email. And if you want, you can add a new email here. You simply type the new email address that you want to forward from, verify with your password. Asana will then send a verification email to make sure you have access to that address. And then once you have this set up, it means that you can forward emails from not just the main email that you use with Asana, but other addresses that you've whitelisted. So this is particularly useful if you do use multiple emails like a personal and a work email with Asana, or you have multiple businesses that you're managing and you want to forward those emails into the same account. From here, I can actually choose which workspace, if I'm part of multiple workspaces or organizations, I can choose where that email should be forwarded to as well. The next feature I want to highlight is that you can share a read-only version of a project with external parties, people that you don't have as users in your Asana account. And a good use case for this might be if you're wanting to share a project with a client or a contractor that you work with. Now this does only apply to Asana accounts that you have set up as an organization where you can set up different teams. If your Asana account is currently set up as a workspace, this feature won't be available to you. You would need to convert your account into an organization first. But once I'm, I'm set up as an organization, I can navigate to a project and then if up here, I can enable or create a public link. So I can copy this, I can email this to anyone I like, they don't have to be an Asana user. And then if I preview this, this is an example of what that person would see. So here we go, they can view the project as a list, as a board, in the timeline, or calendar view. Now this really is just a high level view of the project. If this person tries to click in to view a task, they're not gonna see any of the task details like the subtasks, descriptions, or comments, all of that is kept private to the collaborators, the people who are actually working inside the project. But it is quite useful if you want to share, for example, a calendar or a high level timeline of a project with some external stakeholder. The next feature I want to highlight is that if you click on a user's name or hover your mouse rather on a user's name in Asana, you can then create a one-on-one -on -one project with that person. So I can, uh, I can specify here what is my relationship with Warwick? Because that's going to help determine the structure of the project and how it gets set up. So if I say he's a peer or I report to Warwick or I manage Warwick, you can see that the, the discussion topics here change slightly. So I'm going to say I manage Warwick and let's click continue. 
And then it's gonna suggest some example tasks uh, to create where we can discuss his current workload, his number one priority, and what's, uh, what's blocking him. I can change these if I want, but I'll leave this for now. And so now Asana has set up this one-on-one -on -one project that's private to me and this person. It's set up the project with some default sections for some discussion topics that we should uh, discuss, some things we wanna share with each other, some FYIs, any project updates, and it's listed some action items for both of us to add this project to our favorites and add some ideas and things in here. So this is a private project where the two of us can uh, discuss private topics, discuss each other's workload, and especially if you're a project manager or the owner of your business, you can do this, you can have these one-on-one -on -one projects with each of your employees and discuss and manage their work in a private place. The next feature I want to highlight is related to goals. Now goals is a business feature within Asana that lets me track the key performance indicators and the big kind of goals and things that we're working on as a team. So here I am in the goals section of the sidebar and I have this achieve $1 million in revenue goal. And one of the cool things that we can do with goals is we can set up a progress metric. Now, a recent change to this goals feature is that uh, it used to be that we would just update this metric manually. So I can say uh, I'm measuring this as you know a currency and I can say what is my starting uh, amount, my current amount, let's say 250, and what is my target value? So I'm, I'm trying to get to a million. So I can, I can set up that um, metric and I can manually update how we're tracking towards that goal. But the recent update to this feature is that now we can automatically update our progress towards this goal based on the sub goals or projects that we're working in. So if I link this goal to projects, I can then say, as I complete tasks in the project or milestones, this, can automatically update my goal. Uh, this wouldn't really be applicable to this kind of sales figure. And so once I link a project to this goal, for example, this new product launch here, because this project is 22% complete based on the number of tasks I've completed, I'm now 22% of the way towards my goal. If I add another project, let's just put in uh, this Tesla project as well. Now it's gonna also factor in the tasks from that project. So if you have uh, multiple projects that you're working on and the completion or progress of those projects will help you achieve a bigger goal, you can automatically have that goal progress update. Another useful feature, again, on the smartphone app uh, is next to that ABC icon we looked at before, there's this little microphone icon. So if I click that, I can record an audio note which can be transcribed into my task. This is a test note to show an example of how you can add an audio transcription to a task. Brilliant, actually it got that, I think, perfectly, yeah. So number one, I've got the audio in there and I've got the transcript ready to go as well. So really useful for quick little voice memos. Maybe you even wanna give this a try um, of recording an entire meeting if you're feeling brave. Um, but yeah, nice little hidden feature there in the smartphone app. And the final feature that I wanted to highlight is a fun one. It's not that useful, but it is pretty cool, is if you use the keyboard shortcut tab B, and if you keep pressing that, you get tabby cats appearing on your screen. Or maybe cats aren't your thing, maybe you're more of a dog person. Tab V will get dogs appearing on your screen. So not a particularly useful feature of Asana, but it is pretty cool, and whenever I show people, it always gets a laugh. So there you have it. Those are some of the hidden, lesser known features of Asana that often get overlooked or missed. If you've noticed any features that yourself that are a little bit hidden, please leave me a comment below if there's anything really cool that I've missed there. If you do have any questions, again, leave me that comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.